ready to hybrid worlds, fusing art in real life with virtual realms. I'm Julie Walsh, and I'm so delighted to be here today with these fabulous panelists. And without further ado, I'm going to just mention their names, and I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about themselves. Our format will be introductions, and then we'll go back to Janina, who will screen share the wonderful projects she and Sebastian are doing, and then we'll proceed in the order discussed. And then we just have an informal chat among friends. So let's start with our introductions. So Sebastian, would you like to go first? Sure. Thank you for having us. I'm Sebastian, living in Munich right now and still studying arts. Before I did art and multimedia, so that's why I came to the digital part we are talking later. And but still, yeah, doing some art here, sewing and stuff, and going on in these things. And together with Janina and Tonike, we have a project to show you. Exactly. We are two of the three founders of Ille Gallery, which actually exists in Munich um, in the analog real world. Um, and we will uh, talk for this panel, we will talk about the digital Ille Gallery. We did. Great. And, so go ahead. And uh, Tatjana? Yes, hi, um, I'm Tatjana. Thanks also for having me. Um, I'm also from Munich and um, I'm also studying at the Academy of Fine Arts. I have a background in graphic design and I um, started or I, um, I was part of the project for We Are Zero that um, took place this spring, um, partly in Munich, partly in the virtual world. And Martina, great. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Martina, so I don't know, you can't see my real face, but you see my virtual face here. Um, I am an artist, I uh, work mainly with interactive and virtual reality art. Um, currently I'm teaching at the Department of Transmedia Art at the University of Applied Art in Vienna, and as well as uh, the University of Visual Art in Venice. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here in this panel discussion. <laughs> Look forward. Me too. <laughs> and Sebastian and Janina, I know you cannot wait to screen share your wonderful ELA project with us, so I leave it to you. So we would need the PDF now of ELA Gallery, please. And then we go through it. There is the PDF from ELA. <laughs> there it is. Okay, that's our logo. Uh, and you see an architectural drawing of the space uh, where it's placed in the real life at Barra Street, which is like very much central in Munich, close to the museum quarter. And last year, um, we kind of occupied these empty boxes. Uh, you could see on the side of, of the wall of the building and did some shows there inside. But then Corona happened and during lockdown, we, did a digital version of it. Next slide, go to the next page. There you can see the actual space in Munich. There was like every three weeks we had an um, exhibition and people just coming on the street, gathering and looking at the art. Um, go to the next slide. There we ask someone to or we build together this 3D model of the like very much uh, uh, more or less the same dimensions like it was in real, like the just the wall with the windows on it. And we put there together um, three shows. This is a picture of the first show. And above you can see floating there's like the, the website of each artist we showed in the, in the box beneath. Next slide. Exactly. There you can see a little bit how it then was going on there during the exhibition. It was many people came there actually, and we could talk. And yeah, this is actually like the opening view you have here. <laughs> we used Mozilla Hubs for that. Maybe that's yeah. something. Like you, you can have an avatar, uh, you type your name, it's floating above you, and you can really talk uh, in real time with your audio signal. So it was like, ah, oh, hi, there you are again, Flo. I, we, 
each other because it was locked down. So it was like, that's why we use the same space, like in the digital version to have this kind of um, re remembering effect, like, ah, oh, yeah, that's the space we were hanging around like before lockdown happened. Next slide. The first show, now the second show. Oh yeah, the second show was actually, then we actually realized what we can do in a digital space because um, we use that to bring uh, people from all around the world together, which we can't do um, in Munich. So for the uh, Ille number seven that you see here on the poster, um, we asked five different artists from five different continents and had a very funny exhibition opening where um, uh, one artist in Los Angeles uh, came for the exhibition opening at eight o'clock in the morning with a coffee and Nuncio in Australia was already kind of tipsy at one o'clock at night for the opening and that was really cool to have all these people together. <laughs> and on the right side you can see the kind of uh, manual we created for how to access in the in Mozilla Hubs because it's not so easy if you are doing that the first time and we put that on the on the flyer so um, people to show them like how to to come and access to the final illegal digital version Excellent. and then the, we did the last show if you go to the next slide uh, Janina um, uh, what? Yeah, One before, exactly. That is the last show, like the last digital show, which we went one more step further and we did it um, because uh, Munich, um, the world kind of was opening up again a little bit after Corona and we um, had a hybrid show. So we were actually um, using both the digital and the analog space and exhibited Katrin Agnes Klar. Um, and yeah, which had a nice effect bringing that digital landscape into the real space on the street. Guys, we have time for, if you have one more picture and then we need to move on because we're about halfway through our time. And I Last still want slide. us to get into talking. Yes. Last slide, René. It's now we combine the three shows to one Mozilla Hubs room, which you can visit. And there you can see the website. And um, there it's, you can see the three shows like next to each other and so just click on the link and have a look there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Tatjana, would you like to share your project with us? Yes, that's a PDF called Media Meet Tage. So Meet Tage, Rene, you have it? Mm, yes, that's perfect. Um, yeah, that's a quick um, over look. Um, if you scroll through the next um, um, pages, please. Like, yeah, that's um, four, that's 10 different artists who teamed up. Um, yeah, continue scrolling. Yeah, that's, you can stay in this now. Um, yeah, it's 10 different artists from the Academy of Fine Arts who teamed up um, to do a uh, show, to do an exhibition about um, embodiment actually and we were basing our uh, we said like um first we wanted to do um a topic um, about um a hospital then we continued on working on embodiment and then corona happened we said okay what we planned out first didn't work out so we have to um switch to a different kind of media so what we did was um we moved on to mozilla hubs and said, okay, this is also fitting to our topic very well, um, but how are we going to present our works that were formerly um, supposed to be shown in an analog world? So um, we were 10 different artists, and um, as I initiated a project, um, I yeah, well offered actually to everyone to individually kind of create a special environment for their own artwork. So what happened was that um, the background, uh, the file you see right now was um, we had an foyer or entrance room where all the avatars were meeting. As Sebastian mentioned before, that was all in lockdown time. That was, um, yeah, happened in, uh, our opening was in May. So people were still, yeah, like, um, not really meeting other people outside. So um, yeah, everyone was happy um, to meet um, um, uh, friends in, in this 
um, yeah, well, individual <laughs> kind of format. So um, that was kind of our room where people were meeting and people are getting along with the navigation because um, even though it's 2020, a lot of people are not very used to um, handle digital formats, not even to mention three-dimensional spaces where you can draw, take photos, show videos, share sounds. That's um, been very overwhelming for a lot of people. So what we said, we decided to have um, this kind of entrance room where people can just get along with the situation and chat. And then, um, Renee, if you go um, up the uh, PDF again, um, we had, yeah, exactly. We had in this one, we had two video works. Um, so we kind of um, said uh, the former picture was uh, my work. That was um, a two channel video installation, and that was actually made for a white cube space, more or less. But um, since it was a little bit about, um, yeah, well, the meditative aspect of uh, rhythmic sounds, I was uh, thinking about the format, how to um, yeah, exhibit um, a video, uh, a two-channel video. And um, I was thinking about um, placing it in water or like above water. So the sound of the video came together with the sound of the sea that you can maybe see a little bit in the background. The video um, work below was from a different artist who was um, screening, uh, who was filming the movement of the stars, kind of, um, yeah, well, uh, with the long shutter speed, I think. So um, it was um, very close or very nearby that we say, okay, we transform the whole entrance area room into. Um, the same, but only at night, and we showed the video in the skies. So we kind of played a little bit with that as well, um, to kind of have a little bit of a connection with the um, first room, but also to open up completely new worlds and um, yeah, to use all of our cap capabilities. Great, thanks so much. And we'll move on to Martina. Yes, I'm gonna be quick. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think more or less like all the all the rest during the lockdown I've been discovering Mozilla Hubs and I've been basically taking most of my VR work uh, and reinterpret them for Mozilla Hubs so for having like a multiplayer experience uh, but for this panel I wanted to show you this project I've been creating together with Soundframe and Pausanio that's area for virtual art um, and this is really meant as a virtual space for virtual art. So it was not meant as a place for, you know, taking, I don't know, sculpture or paintings that were supposed to be in the physical space. And then because of the Corona had to be transposed in the virtual, but this is really meant to be a place for, yeah, to be like a natural habitat for virtual art and getting together because Mozilla Hubs allows us to meet with others and chat. And I think this is kind of a common thing that I, I also saw in the other projects. Uh, we also had, you know, the navigation at the very beginning because it's not so easy for everyone to get to know how to move in Mozilla Hubs. We created a bunch of avatars. This was really important for us to give the possibility to the audience to really choose how they looked in our space, but also being fitting with our space somehow. So the shapes are really born out of the landscape that you are seeing around us. Um, we did have a map here that highlights the main areas of the space. And for this exhibition that was created by Eva Fischer and Angie Paul of our team, uh, we have four different Mozilla hubs. The one of mine, which is also in the show of Julie that we will see later, um, Deepart, Elena Romenkova and Enrico Zago. At the center, we have some 3D sculptures, uh, plus the download link of Yanchi, which is a virtual reality experience, also being created during the lockdown or as a reaction to the lockdown. And then we had a, move, uh, a music, um, music video um, program also being created. And that's really meant as a space where you can come and experience art and just navigate through hubs, but also a place where you can just meet people and chat. So I'm just going to, I was fast <laughs> wrapping up this <laughs> okay. uh, short overview. <laughs> short overview. OK, great. Now we can get down to the meaty questions of the discussion. And 
You know, I think when you're exhibiting and curating art in virtual realms, it's so important to start out with a space that fulfills the needs of the artwork. That's the bottom line. And can you all talk to me about what criteria and decisions were involved in you choosing your specific architecture for your projects? And I'd like to start with Martina. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, the process was like that. We, uh, as a team of RF Virtual Art, we did start it with um, um, a single user experience that is on our website, and that was uh, designed and created by Maximilian Prague of our team. So I, we had to start for Mozilla Hubs from that aesthetic. And that was these very organic shapes that would form our main landscape. Um, and the idea was really to create a place that somehow resemble a physical place that you have to walk, but you can also fly. Um, you have the islands, but it's also not really an island. It's more like a, a organic with the whole landscape and create a sort of like really a nice space to be for the art. So that where you can just not just come for the art, but also stay for that. So uh, these organic shapes and these abstract organic shapes was very important for us to be maintained in the development. Now, it's very interesting because most people, you know, when you think of traditional ways of exhibiting art or even going into galleries, you know, I feel like galleries and museums can traditionally you know, the power ones. It's like you have this feeling of you're going into a temple or something. It's a mm -hmm. bit intimidating, the scale of things. Um, so I felt like in your presentation, your project, there was this nurturing component that yeah. you want the people to be, yeah. feel like they're in a safe place to explore. And yeah. Sebastian and Janina, I am so fascinated by your background story. So please talk to us a little bit about your own architecture and uh, the story again. The story of in the gallery. So illegal is for illegal if you're not going to say that because I love <laughs> <it>. <laughs> so in the gallery is named after legal. It's an illegal spot that we um, occupied in Munich. And for us, actually, like the architecture was quite obvious. We wanted the recognition value. We wanted the people to recognize that it's actually the analog space. We just made it a lot bigger so the little avatars had more space to look around and, the vi and we could use videos and different kinds of um, media yeah so we enlarged like the gallery i think 10 times like it would be in reality so and um, it was also allowed to to fly in our space so you were like kind of like a fly and you could fly to the to the boxes and it was like much more immersive than um, you, you in reality you could never go that close and see like the in in front of you the video like this big like it was there um in the in the three shows yeah and in the first show there was like because these were the same people they were supposed to exhibit before lockdown happened so they showed more or less the things which would uh, which would they would have showed like in um, physically, but in the in the second in the third show it was like adapted to Mozilla Hub, so it was they were using more um, of the of the tools you had in Mozilla Hubs, like for example this um, spawning element thing. Mm -hmm. So there was one box. There were numbers were coming out of the box, and this is stuff which is not. Um, of course, not possible in reality. So we started to think, oh, uh, where where's the border? So what you could like, there's you could show everything in a, in a digital space, and also play with the boxes. Like there was one idea we had to open the boxes like inside the wall and open it to a big room. <laughs> that's that's all things which is possible. And touch, you know, I think before we move into touch on, I would just say it's interesting because. You know, your approach is diametrically opposite to Martina and Tatjana. It's based on a real architecture, but I would say that there's a level of authenticity that you feel when you're seeing those art exhibits. And I'm hoping you will post a link for people to be able to see more of the work because I'm not sure if your images were full screen and I feel like they should also check out your video. Mm. Tatjana, could you talk to us a little bit um, and respond to the challenges of architecture in your own design? 
Yeah, well, what um, was happening in our case is that um, we were thinking about um, adapting somehow to the real architecture of the gallery food that we were supposed to exhibit. Um, but since um, in this virtual world you can do whatever you want, we kind of put ourselves in the position where we said like um, we're going to be kind of close to the real architecture, but also abstracted very um, yeah well. So um, what we came up with was or what I came up with was um, to create kind of a Greek temple style of um, architecture with columns and um, no roof, no walls, um, only kind of um, yeah temple ring maybe with tiles on it and um, yeah well the projects are uh, well, like the, the entrance gates to the individual rooms were attached next to um, objects that were exhibited in this um, main room so to say. So the objects, the portal keys so to say, were not the real um, uh, art, it was only the opening um, object to the um, artist's rooms, artist individual rooms. So Renee, I'm going to just break the wall for a second. Do we have an additional five minutes or are we only have one minute left? Okay, he's not responding. So I just continue on. So then I guess I have time for one last question. Um, when you think about your uh, about your architectures and your spaces, are, were there some challenges or unexpected advantages that you found in curating virtually? And also, what are your plans for future exhibitions? And if you could all keep it, unfortunately, sort of short, that would be good. I'm going to start with Martina. Um, so, but, well, challenges was mainly the limitation that comes with a platform like Mozilla Hub. So you have really low poly counting and low texture numbers and so on. So that was the, I think the only challenges we had was very technical. And then of course, how to make people understand where to go, how to move. And I just love the idea that, you know, we, we just had this space which was organic and we just could place art wherever and everywhere would fit, you know, somehow we, we didn't have this limitation that you would have in a physical space where, okay, that's the wall, that's where you have to hang things. Um, so I, I like the freedom that the virtual gave us for this exhibition. Of course, Mozilla Hubs comes with the limitation. Uh, we did already have a second exhibition created for the Vienna Design Week, and that was uh, even more interesting because we started from 2D graphics from the studio Nadine that created the whole image for the festival, and then we kind of extruded it into these organic shapes again. Um, and yeah, future project with the team of the area for virtual art, we are and expanded team, we are gonna um, organize and curate the new media festival in Vienna. So we are working on that right now, which is uh, really exciting. I'm looking very much forward to that. I wish I could be there in real life. Oh, it's gonna be super virtual. So you, <laughs> you can be there. You can be there. <laughs> great, great. Tatiana, can you respond? Yes, well, actually, um, I can only say the same. Um, the technical aspect was very challenging. The low poly um, objects, um, it's been a challenge, but um, it's um, the it, you as long like uh, you can learn a lot and you can change a lot of your technical skills and adapt to it. And the more you do it, the more um, comfortable you become with the technical aspects and the more yeah, safer you get. So it's just a question of time, actually, and it's also a question of time, how quickly the internet will develop. So maybe Mozilla Hubs is also going to change their restrictions with this low poly um, thing. And yeah, for the future, actually, um, my group and I, we were thinking about doing a second project as well. But since um, we want to focus it on the topic and not on the media, the virtual world only, we want to focus it on the question of translation itself like it doesn't have to be only into virtual worlds it can be also into written text so we are thinking about doing um, a mixed exhibition the next time but it's a project so we will see when it will become and real. Janina and Sebastian 
Okay, so we'll wrap it up then. Yeah. So thank you all for tuning in to this panel. And I thank my wonderful panelists. And again, Media and Taga for having us today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>